What is going on beautiful people? I am Lee Hammett, the diagnosed self-aware narcissist known as mental illness and welcome to another episode of the Narcissist Code. If this is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice, I use my platform on social media to raise awareness for NPD, get more people into therapy, and also validate the victims, survivors, and thrivers of this disorder and the toxic traits to come along with it, y'all. Today's episode is going to be about going no contact or cutting off, setting boundaries with toxic narcissistic parents. So we see a lot of videos about no con going no contact with um, your significant other, going no contact with a uh, an ex-wife or ex-husband or uh, somebody you're trying to co-parent with and things like that. Very rarely do you see videos talking about going no contact with a narcissistic or a toxic parent because it's tough as hell to do, y'all. It is extremely hard to do because a lot of times when you grow up in these toxic households, you get conditioned to believe that you are, you, you get conditioned to believe that because this person gave birth to you, you are indebted to this person for the rest of your life. You get conditioned to believe that because this person did this for you or did that for you, that you are that you owe them something. You owe them your existence. You owe them your time, effort, and energy, and things like that. Because you get conditioned to do this type of stuff, you owe them. You see what I'm saying? You owe it to them. So, it's, it, it, and people make you feel guilty about wanting to cut your parents off, but you sometimes it's what you have to do. I'm not. This is not a video of me promoting cutting off parents. I know people are gonna come in and like, well, Lee, it's people like you, it's you damn millennials that just tell people just to cut their parents off. And this, this, this. That. No, I'm not telling people to cut their parents off. I'm just saying sometimes you, you as a parent, deserve to be cut off. If you are mentally, emotionally, sometimes physically abusing your children into their adulthood, then they, for their best interest in the ch in best interest of that uh, probably adult child now, it might be best for them to go no contact with you to be able to heal. You know what I mean? To be able to heal and get, sorry, I'll see you. To be able to heal and get past the emotional abuse or the trauma that they probably experienced for the entirety of their lives. They might be in their, they might be in their 20s or 30s now. I talked to a woman the other day. She's like, she had to cut her, she had to cut her narcissistic, toxic parent off because they were still just every time they they, they couldn't do anything right in their eyes. They were still growing up every time, every time it's still on their birthday in their thirties. They still get treated badly on their birthday in their thirties. The mom never validates their, never validates her emotions, never validates her uh, her life. Tells her that she's a horrible parent. Makes people it's just all, the energy around them is horrible. Always competing with their, always competing with her as an adult. Now you never be better than me at this. You know you never were good at that. You know you're overweight, right? Just never. No, there's no positivity coming from that person. You mean it's even she's like every time I go see my mom, it's emotionally draining. I get emotionally drained. You know, I I, I leave. I I'll be having a good day. I had to go see my mom, and then I'm just having a bad day. Where I have to kind of decompress, and it led to her having to drink when she leaves her parents' house, her mom's house, or whatever. And she's like, I'm think I'm abusing alcohol now. It can lead to it can lead to stuff like that. So she would no contact with her, her mom for a few months later. She called me. She's like, I haven't had a drink since. Sometimes you have to do it to heal. Didn't like I say to heal? Yeah, and people, but this is one thing you have to consider before you go no contact with a parent or a family member because everybody else is going to look, sometimes everybody else is going to look, everybody else is going to look at you as the enemy. So you might have to cut off, uh, this is tough, y'all. That's why I said you have to, a lot to consider before doing it. You might have to cut off more than just your parent. You might have to cut off your brothers and sisters. You might have to cut off your aunts and uncles. You might have to cut off your cousins and things like that. Your your grandparents. There's so many people who are going to make you feel like you are just a horrible person for cutting off your parent because they don't know they don't know the real version of your parent. They don't know the real version of your grandparent. They don't know the real version of your sibling or whoever you're dealing with in this toxic situation, this toxic family dynamic. Sometimes it's the mom and dad are both toxic. They had you have to go no contact with both of them. Sometimes it's just the dad. Sometimes it's just the mom. But the other person is an abuse is a victim or you know a super codependent person. They just celebrate. They just support the narcissistic toxic person in their abuse of you. So your mom might be a victim of your father who's a narcissist. But you might have to cut both of them off. You may. You can't pick or choose. I'm just going to talk to my mom. And then the dad comes and gets involved. Like, they're not going to talk to me. You can't talk to them either. So you might have to cut both of them off. So there's so many moving pieces into going no contact with a narcissistic parent. But sometimes it's the best way to help you heal. Just like when you leave an intimate relationship, going no contact with this person is the best way for you to heal sometimes. Because talking to them and communicating with them, you know, 
it sucks. It's in. It's like it's like uh, it's, when people use the word, the term in the, in the energy vampires to describe narcissists and toxic people. It's true a lot of times. They just drain your emotional energy. It's like you be emotionally drained when you leave their leave their presence or whatever. So if you, as like I say, if you break up with them in a relationship, it might be best for you to just keep it moving in that circumstance right there. To keep it moving in that situation. You know, I was to say if you can't go no contact with your parents or you can't cut them off because they're. They're, they're pretty much sometimes their life depends on you like you were their caretaker and stuff like that you have to set boundaries y'all i know it sounds weird sometimes but i tell people to set boundaries on their parents because it sounds weird it sounds like the dynamic has switched like your parents were setting boundaries on you when you were growing up your parents had set the law right you know it's raised you to a certain standard of rules and stuff like that so but now you're an adult you're on equal footing as them so now you can have boundaries for your parents you see what i'm saying you can have boundaries for this person in your life you can you get to have boundaries against your parents you get to have boundaries like that you have to go over there and you if you have to go over there or you depend on them for child care or something like that they say something no you have to no there's a word count sometimes you, they go over there and they say something disrespectful all right gotta go you mean but if you depending about if you are dependent upon them for child care think about how you were raised <laughs> you know what i mean if you're dependent on them for child care think about how you were raised in that situation think about how you got to this point you mean think about how you were raised how you got here and things like that and then reconsider it do you want to leave your kids here long periods of time i know you have to sometimes but do you want to leave your kids in this environment where you were raised in that you feel like you have to cut a parent off right now perspective y'all perspective matters so if you're dealing with a narcissist you're dealing with a toxic person understand that perspective is super is extremely important in these circumstances and things like that it just is y'all it really really is so if you're dealing with a toxic parent, this is, the, the, yeah, I'm just, I, I know people hate when I talk about this tough, this subject because it's just a tough thing to do, yeah, but you can set boundaries on them. You you have to, if you can't cut them off, you don't want to cut them off. Sometimes it's tough to cut them off. You have to set boundaries on them. I, one, of my, one of my good friends I met on this journey of personal development, this journey of self worth narcissism on TikTok and social media. Her name is uh, Nia, N-I-A. Uh, her social media tag is how to love a battered woman. She's no contact with her mom for the last 10 years. Because her mom tried to get her kidnapped as a kid. Her mom was holding her back. Her mom was trying to fatten her up. Her mom said, you know, you, you're going to be nothing when you grow up. You're going to be just a whore that lays on your back and makes babies and do, do this, that, and the third. Her mom was not a positive influence in her life. Her mom was literally holding her back and harming her emotionally in ways that is almost damn near irreparable. So she had to cut her mom off. And she's been super thriving and helping other people in this in this circumstance right now. So if you're interested in, some, in seeing somebody firsthand that's dealing with this and thriving through it, cutting off a toxic narcissistic parent. But she's, she's still in contact with her father. But it's like low contact with boundaries. It's low contact with her father with boundaries. But her mom is completely no contact. Her mom and dad are not together. Um, but that's how it goes. Her at, her, her name is how to love a battered woman. Just like that. One word. How to love a battered woman, Nia Renee. Just she look her up. She she tells her story about her mom. Her mom, just you know, she from the second when she was from the second that she was born, her mom looked at her like she was an enemy. That's how she felt. She's like I, my mom looked at me as an enemy, and that's how I felt for this like, you know for pretty much down there the entirety of my life that I was an enemy of my mom. I could never do right in my mom's eyes. My mom held me back. My mom told me this. My mom told me that. My mom got to the point where she's like, she never felt loved by her mom. So it got to the point where her mom decided to pay somebody to try to have her kidnapped by her uncle and make her disappear or something like that. I don't know if she's going to unalive her, but try to pay her uncle, try to pay her brother to kidnap her daughter to get, get rid of her. There are some toxic ass parents out here, y'all. So sometimes it is best to go no contact with them, but it's tough. When you go no contact with them, you have to be no contact. You mean, I don't know if you want to go no contact forever, but sometimes you have to go no, no contact for a while to let you heal in order to be able to get to the point where you set these boundaries. Hey, look, I know I haven't talked to you in about six months. I needed some time to myself to heal and things like that. If they immediately start to attack you, back to no contact. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I know how tough it is, y'all. I really, really do. But anyway, y'all, I'm going to cut this thing short. I really thank y'all so much for tuning in. It, um, Toronto, Canada meetup is November the 19th. Toronto, Canada, I'll be there. Some other people will be there. Um, the link is uh, NARC Avengers, N A R C, NARC Avengers.com slash Toronto. See you there. Get registered up, y'all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mental illness is out. Peace.